Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about determining the length of a dipole. And the question comes from um, a guy, let's see, Daniel. Um, it's actually Danagel Zemjak. Sorry if I'm, I, I know I pronounced that. Uh, pronunci uh, uh, changing names to English is a, a fraught issue. Um, anyway, he is in Slovenia and he has this question. He has a diamond BU50 ballon. Uh, it's a one-to-one -one ballon. It's designed for a dipole feed. So you can bring a coax up to it and then the two wires out. Um, I've never been a fan of these, but lots of people use them. It is best practice to use a ballon in that case. But uh, um, he has some uh, 2.5 millimeters squared um, wire. This is, they measure um, wire sizes in uh, the rest of the world outside the United States in the area of the wire and this is 2.5 millimeters soft wire so it's soft drawn copper just like a uh, house wire. And now the question is that you could ask is well how how thick is that wire and as it turns out it doesn't matter to the answer. So we'll just go straight. How many meters must I have on each side for 14 megahertz from 14.0 to 14.350 if you can answer me, yes, I can answer you. It's a very simple uh, question. In the United States, and I'm going to use the U.S. one since you asked me, um, it's, you take the number 486 and divide it by the frequency in megahertz. And this equals the length of the dipole. in feet. So you can guess what we're going to do. We're going to use this and convert this to uh, meters when we get to the other side. So I'm sorry, it's not 486, it's 468. Why am I forgetting that? Okay, so 468 divided by um, divided by, we're going to take the center frequency, which is 14,175. Okay, now this dipole, I know from experience, will cover the entire band with less than 2 to 1 SWR. Okay, so let's go ahead and divide that out. And we're going to do it the, the simple way. I'm going to go to um, Google and go um, what is 468 divided by 14.175 and the answer is 33 almost exactly 33 33 feet okay so we're going to be even, uh, let's see, so 33 divided by 2 is 16 and a half feet on a side, or 16.5 feet on a side. So you've got your dipole, your ballon, okay, and each side is 16.5 feet, 16.5 feet. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat that uh, there's not a very big antenna. Um, okay, now let's convert 33 feet to meters. And we're going to go up here. What is, is 33 feet in meters? It's uh, 10.05, so it's um, 
0.05 meters for the whole thing, meters. Okay, or five meters on the side. Okay, so let's draw out the dimensions of this antenna. The entire distance is 10 meters. I mean, you could have guessed that because it's a half-wave dipole for 20 meters. 10 meters, almost exactly. And when you cut it in half, you're going to be 5 meters on the side. Okay. Now, what you want to do is cut this end a little long, put it through your insulator, and wrap this back around itself, okay? So that if you find out that your frequency is too high, you can lengthen the antenna slightly by uncurling this and putting it back. Now, a couple other questions uh, to consider here. Uh, do you want uh, hard or soft copper? Or soft copper. If you're putting a heck of a lot of pull, tightness, tautness on this thing. You want to use hard copper, but you're probably not. It's going to come down in the middle a little bit. Okay, so soft copper is fine. Now, note that the diameter of the copper does not matter for how hard or tight you can pull the wire. Because let's suppose you assume, do a, a thought experiment, of cutting that wire in half and you have two wires and you put the equal amount of strain on both sides you can keep doing that till you get any size of wire you want and it'll only take the same strain so don't pull that too hard every few years you may want to pull it tight if it starts getting uh, off frequency uh, and again since you've just pulled the end around the end like this uh, you can do that without a problem. The other question is insulated versus uninsulated. Okay, insulated versus uninsulated. It doesn't matter. Now, I will tell you this. It will slightly affect the length of the wire. Slightly affect the length of the wire. Um, but you've got this little thing you can adjust. It's, I have heard people say you can figure this exactly and it'll work the first time. No, I don't believe that. If that has happened to you, that has been pure luck. Um, the insulated and uninsulated wire have a very slightly different velocity factor um, and you're going to end up adjusting this thing anyway. So you won't have a, uh, a problem. Now, should it be insulated in the trees? Maybe that's a good idea, uh, maybe not. Now, how about um, single wire versus stranded? I always go for stranded because it's just easier to deal with. Okay, just easier to deal with. Um, but if what you have is single, use what you have. Uh, I made a dipole from just some uh, electrical wire that I had for some other project. And uh, I think it was stranded, 14 gauge, um, THHN insulated. And it was just super easy to make a dipole. Okay, now the other thing is to hold this up. You need to keep the ends up. The ideal height for any dipole is one half wave. The reason for that is because then the lobe on either side of the antenna is as close to the ground as you're going to get it and have it still be a single lobe. If you start raising the antenna above half wavelength, Yes, this lobe will come down, but you're going to start a new lobe on top of it, and you're going to start losing the power. If it's up significantly higher, 
you're actually going to get like petals like a flower okay and you'll have sharp nulls in between and now a half wave on here is 33 feet or 10 meters so if you can get it up to 10 meters it's pretty good uh, you can use whatever you can get hold of from bamboo to <laughs> whatever to hold the thing up now I would recommend that if you've got a house here and you've got your end of the wire that you've got an insulator there and there goes your wire and this is rope connected to something else rope that this be greater than one meter or greater than three feet I did some modeling with on this very question how close can you get the end of a dipole to its support and the answer was if this is a metal support and you're less than a meter away or three feet away the support starts to become part of the antenna and you don't want that so about one meter seems to be the tipping point for letting it go off and act by itself so there you have it and um let's see, get the name again here danigel or danielle depending on how the letters are pronounced i'll go with daniel uh, and here's how you can get that antenna up simple and easy i might point out i don't know how much room you've got in the backyard but you can put a 20 meter antenna up like that and you can bring another shorter antenna connected at the same point with a different rope handling it down or perpendicular or something and do 17 meters this is 20 meter antenna 17 15 and so on this is what's called a fan antenna and they actually do work. So uh, lots of things to play with. Put up the 20 meter dipole first and get it all working before you start messing with it. Then you at least know that you can go back to something that will work, okay? So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to dcastler.com support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. Don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.